The opening scene features our protagonist, Salaya Kahawate, who is currently doing his internship at a lavish restaurant in Germany. Salaya seems to have planned the future in great detail since childhood. He doesn't want to go to college after completing high school, so he has started interning at the restaurant to gain experience, as his ultimate goal is to open his own restaurant. However, Salaya's life takes an unexpected turn when his eyesight begins to progressively decrease. Out of concern, his parents take him for a checkup. After conducting an examination, his ophthalmologist reveals that he is suffering from a rare eye disease that has damaged the retina. The doctor suggests an immediate eye surgery to retain at least a small fraction of his eyesight. This will prevent him from going completely blind. Heeding to the doctor's advice, Salaya undergoes the surgery, and now his vision is only 5% of normal human vision. In the aftermath, Salaya's father wants to transfer him to a special school, but the latter refuses to go. Salaya is determined not to let this setback prevent him from achieving his dreams. His father is clearly unsupportive of him, continuing the same school, but with some help from his mother, he stays on. The next day at school, Salaya tries studying despite his blurry vision. In the middle of class, he feels something strange. Having lost a major fraction of his vision, he seems to have developed sharper auditory senses. It's evident as he can even hear the sound of someone chewing gum in the classroom. Furthermore, his memory has also improved greatly. From that point onwards, he changes his way of learning. Instead of taking notes, he focuses on learning by listening and memorizing. He eventually manages to graduate from school with good grades. After this, Salaya enthusiastically begins applying for jobs in the hotel industry, but he is repeatedly rejected due to his condition. So, he decides to apply without revealing his disability. The plan surprisingly works, and he lands an interview at a prestigious hotel. Upon arrival, Salaya walks straight up to the HR director, but before starting with the interview, another candidate named Max arrives. He apologizes for being late, citing the bad road conditions. The director accepts his apology, and the trio walk around the hotel, simultaneously conducting the interview. Salaya is charismatic and confident, presenting himself as the perfect potential employee. After touring around and interviewing for a while, Salaya is offered an apprenticeship at the hotel for five months, and successfully passing this phase will grant him a permanent position as an employee. Not only him, but Max also passes the interview. Salaya then walks out of the hotel and shares the good news with his family. They are delighted that he has finally got his dream job. Later, his sister helps him move into a new apartment in the city. She also helps him memorize the route to the hotel by counting the number of steps he must walk in any direction. On the first day, Salaya arrives at the hotel, but he's nervous due to his vision. Not long after, Max shows up to say hello, relieving Salaya to some extent. The freshies are then addressed by the director and the rest of the leading staff at the hotel. They are to train under them, learning the ins and outs of various divisions of the hotel. They're divided into several groups, and fortunately, Salaya is on the same team as Max. As their first assignment, Salaya's group is made to work in the housekeeping division, in which they're taught how to set the rooms perfectly. After receiving the instructions, the trainees start working on their own. During this, Salaya finds it hard to clean the mirror, so he uses a magnifying glass to have a clearer view. Max happens to notice this and demands to know why he's acting strangely. Feeling cornered, Salaya opens up about his condition and requests that Max keep it a secret, or else he'll be dismissed. Max fully understands his struggle and even offers to help him in any way he can. Soon after, they become friends and start doing all of their tasks together. Max teaches Salaya how to do the housekeeping in simpler ways and also assists him in memorizing the directions around the hotel. After a month of training, the boys pass their housekeeping assessment. Now, they're moved on to the kitchen division. Being a busy and chaotic division, Salaya clearly struggles to adapt to this new environment. One day, while emptying the dirty dishes, a co-worker from Afghanistan named Hamid approaches him. He quickly suspects that Salaya has problems with his eyes and asks him about the same. When Salaya affirms, Hamid offers his support, asking to summon him if he faces any problems. I haven't seen this much support for blindness since the OJ trial. In the next scene, Salaya is taking out the trash when he hears a woman singing. Despite being unable to see, he immediately falls for her voice. Turns out the woman is a vegetable supplier, and her name is Laura. The following day, she approaches him and strikes up a conversation, asking if he's new. Salaya affirms, and the two chat at length even though they've just met. Their conversation is soon interrupted by Salaya's supervisor, who assigns him the task of slicing a block of ham. Due to his impaired vision, Salaya ends up hurting himself while using the cutting machine. Suspicious, the supervisor puts an easily visible bowl in Salaya's way before calling him in that direction. As expected, the poor guy fails to notice the bowl and trips over it. Now that he's caught, Salaya reveals the truth about his vision, 
Much to his surprise, the supervisor generously teaches him how to use the machine instead of firing him. Salaya quickly understands the structure and functionality of the machine, and as a result, he begins using it professionally from the very next day. Apart from this, Salaya confides his feelings regarding Laura to Max, who then helps him describe her physical appearance. But to his dismay, Laura already has a boyfriend. This saddens him, so Max takes him to a nightclub in order to cheer up his mood. Given his enhanced hearing, a nightclub is likely to blow out his eardrums, and nothing will cheer him up like going deaf, too. He encourages Salaya to socialize and even sets up some girls for him. Although initially hesitant, Salaya ends up taking one of the girls home and sleeping together. After a few weeks of hard work and dedication, Salaya and his group manage to pass the kitchen assessment. The following month, Max and Salaya progress to the reception division. As usual, the two best friends work together and eventually pass this division as well. One day, while working, Laura waves at Salaya, who then goes to talk to her. How did he see her do that? As they converse, he learns that she broke up with her boyfriend. This makes him so happy that he impulsively asks her out for dinner, to which she agrees. In the fourth month, Salaya, Max, and some others are moved to train in the restaurant and bar division, which is considered as the hardest one to pass. It's particularly challenging for Salaya, as the measurements must be precise for all drinks to taste the exact same. Thankfully, there's Max, who stays with him after work hours and helps him count the steps to walk around the area. He also teaches him how to distinguish the ingredients and how to be precise with them. After several days of determination and practice, Salaya manages to prepare a perfect drink in front of the bar supervisor, Kleinschmidt. However, Kleinschmidt, being a strict and grumpy guy, claims it to be a stroke of luck. He must be grumpy because his name translates to Little Schmidt, and you know what I'm saying. The scene then shifts to Salaya dinner date with Laura. Throughout the meal, they share each other's life stories and have a fun time. As their conversation deepens, Salaya is shocked to learn that she already has a five-year-old son named Oscar, but he opts not to react. Even though she shares all of her personal stories, Salaya doesn't reveal any of his condition to her, as he's scared of losing her. Before leaving, Laura invites him to a picnic with her and Oscar, and he agrees. One night, after serving a crowded bar, Salaya is polishing the wine glasses when Klein Schmidt shows up to check. Since the glasses still have stains, the supervisor instructs him to wash them again. Salaya agrees, but he struggles to polish them perfectly, earning him a scolding. Later at home, he still tries polishing the wine glass and eventually comes to a realization. The sound of a perfectly clean glass differs from the stained one. On Sunday, Salaya goes to the picnic with Laura and her son as planned, and they spend a joyful time together. Seeing her son and Salaya bond together so well, Laura feels very happy. After enjoying the entire day, he accompanies her back to her place. Upon putting Oscar to sleep, Laura finally kisses him, and the two share a romantic moment before parting. The following evening, after work, Salaya's mother and sister unexpectedly visit his apartment, they inform him of the devastating news that his father has left the country. He has taken all of their valuable jewelry and savings to start a new life in Sri Lanka. Now, there's no one in the family to earn a living, and moreover, the house installments still have to be paid. As a result, Salaya decides to take up a second job at a bakery and starts working a double shift. Several weeks pass by, and he continues to work day and night without any rest. He doesn't have any leisure time, because even even on the weekends, he accompanies Oscar to the park. In a desperate bid to keep himself afloat, Salaya begins taking narcotics without caring for the consequences. On a weekend, Laura has to leave for urgent work, so she asks Salaya to watch over Oscar for some time. While playing in the park, he receives a call from Max, reminding him of his holiday shift. Salaya then immediately calls Laura, asking her to return soon. But when he hangs up, he realizes that Oscar is nowhere to be seen. That's okay, he's probably still right there. In a state of panic, he starts screaming at the kid's name, but to no avail. Shortly after, Laura returns, and she's mad at Salaya for his recklessness. She frantically starts searching for her son, but Salaya remains frozen. When she yells at him to help her, he breaks down and finally admits that he can't see. However, Laura doesn't have time to argue, so she continues searching. Thankfully, she locates her son across the street and gets him into her van. After this, she approaches Salaya to ask what he meant, to which he explains about his retinal damage. Laura is infuriated, not because of his condition, but because he kept it a secret from her. So, she storms away without hearing his explanation. Despite feeling heartbroken, Salaya dashes to the hotel, where a wedding 
training program is going on. As soon as he enters, he's immediately assigned to serve drinks to the guests. Due to the ongoing life problems, Celia's mind is in a chaotic and exhausted state. He's so mentally distressed that he isn't able to focus on his steps. As a result, he trips over a tablecloth and drops the entire tray to the floor. Seeing this, Max quickly comes to his aid, and the two clean up the mess. Sensing that he's unwell, Max asks him to go home, but he insists on staying as he's scared of being fired. Ignoring his friend's advice, Celia goes to serve the drink for the second time, but he ends up crashing into the wedding cake. Enraged, Kleinschmidt pulls him away from the scene and yells at him, asking if he's blind. Overwhelmed with frustration, Celia affirms that he is blind. This revelation infuriates the supervisor, who fires him right away. From that day onwards, Celia slowly gets engulfed by depression, due to which he spirals into alcoholism. In a bid to relax himself, he goes to a bar where he dances alone in an inebriated state. Soon after, the bouncers spot him and throw him out. Overly drunk, he heads back home, but he ends up falling off the stairs on the way. When he regains his consciousness, he finds himself in the hospital with his sister sitting next to him. He soon breaks down in tears, regretting his actions, but his sister is there to console him. She also shares the good news that their mother has got a job, so he doesn't have to work double shifts anymore. Not long after, Max shows up, and Celia apologizes to him for not listening to him earlier. After recovering from his injuries, Max helps him overcome his depression. He spends most of his time with Celia, making him engage in different rejuvenating activities. They even go cycling, sounds dangerous, with Max guiding him with the directions. Eventually, Celia reverts to his original self and goes back to the hotel with a refreshed mind. There, he meets Klein Schmidt and the hotel director, and apologizes to them for his earlier irrational behavior. Klein Schmidt is adamant to not accept his apology and questions what he's doing there. In response, Celia requests him to let him participate in the final exam. He acknowledges his mistakes and begs for a chance to prove himself. With his honesty and a great deal of courage, the superiors agree to give him a chance. Starting from this point, Celia dedicates all of his time practicing for his graduation exam. During this, he faces several failures, but there's Max to support him. One day, Laura comes to the hotel to deliver some supplies, and this is when she comes across Celia. She doesn't seem to be angry anymore, and even wishes him luck for his finals. Finally, the exam day arrives. Celia excels in all the parameters, but when it comes to table arranging tasks, he messes up. He trips and falls in the last 30 seconds, failing to complete the task properly. But despite the table being an absolute mess, the superiors still grant him the diploma, considering his overall performance. On the graduation day, both Klein Schmidt and the director are proud of Celia. Much to his delight, Klein Schmidt even offers him a job at his bar, but Celia turns it down, saying that he has his own big project to work on, and Kleinschmidt is just such a douche. In the final scene, Celia and Max establish their own hotel, and all of their friends and families come over to support them. To Celia's surprise, Laura also arrives at the scene. She says that she still loves him a lot, making it the best moment of his life. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.